Well, it's a rare chilly spring morning in Tampa, Florida, but that doesn't mean that toy hunting isn't heating up because after chasing down a few leads and following the clues, we went to not one, not two, but three different targets and we found the treasure. That's right. It's the Indiana Jones retro action figures. These things are awesome. We're gonna take them home, open them up. So let's not wait any longer. Let's get this party started. everybody to collecting Star Wars where we're back for another retro action figure review only this time it's not Star Wars it's Indiana Jones Hasbro's done it again bringing your favorite figures that you remember from back in the early 1980s re-releasing the line from Raiders of the Lost Ark we were able to get four of the first five figures released so other than Marion Ravenwood we're going to be opening all of them up for review today it's going to be awesome Let's get to it. Let's open them up and have some fun. And now, here's our Adventures of Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark action figures out of the box and ready to rock. Let's put on our super zoom lens and bring these guys in for a closer look. Now we're going to kick things off with the star himself, Indiana Jones. Check him out in all his retro glory. There he is with those classic painted on eyes and eyebrows. The hat looks good, got the Indiana Jones fedora. It's sculpted on, of course, but it looks nice. It fits him well. Looking down from the face onto the neck, and then we'll see the shirt, his khaki dress shirt with the rugged, wavy leather jacket there. I love how you can see the zipper sculpted in as well as the pockets, really well done. Coming down, you'll see his gun belt, his khaki looking pants, he's got Bendable knees with pegs, and right down to his even slightly detailed brown shoes there. Looking cool. Very good. Love how even have the waves in the uh, break of the pants as it reaches the shoes. And then looking back up, you can see the holster where his gun's gonna go and his whip's gonna hang. That's really nice. There's some Markings there to let you know that this is a modern representation of a vintage classic figure. And right back to the top of the head again. And there he is, Indiana Jones. And now we'll take a look at the German mechanic. And just looking at this face sculpt, he reminds me of Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But otherwise, I think they did a terrific job capturing the mustache, even the furrowed brow, looks mean and uh, ready to fight 
But other than that, he's really just a big piece of peach plastic. Got the barrel chest, big biceps, the meat hook hands, even a uh, belly button, love handles. They thought of everything with this guy. Brown belt, wrinkles in his green army pants, bendable knees again, and nicely sculpted black boots to go along and complete the look. And going up the back, you'll see more markings reminding you that he is a modern figure. Pockets on his back um, of his pants and more peach plastic. And this guy, wrinkled back of the neck, is ready to rock. You don't want to mess with him unless, of course, you've got a propeller handy. Next, we have Tote, the evil German interrogator. And even though that's a simple face sculpt, you can't help but instantly recognize the baddie from the movie with his glasses, his hat, his sinister expression. Well done, well captured for a retro figure. Looking down, you'll see his nice black overcoat as well as his suit underneath and a red tie. He even has a red handkerchief there, double-breasted coat. Nice touch there, belts on the um, waist belt on the overcoat as well. And black pants, black shoes. Again, little minor sculpts there just to make it a little bit nicer than just plain painted feet. And um, yeah, well done for this sinister bad guy. Here's Tote, looking mean and ready to do some bad things. And lastly, we'll look at Belloc in his ceremonial getup. Probably not my favorite face sculpt. Instead of using the um, color of the plastic itself, they decided just to paint a flesh tone on his face. So it kind of looks a little inauthentic. But still, of all the figures, he's got the most going on. A very intricate head wrap with wrinkles and all kinds of designs, including um, the tail that goes off in the back and the hair underneath is nice and curly and well done. He's got soft goods with a cool looking pattern. He's got this great golden bejeweled uh, chest plate hanging from his neck with all kinds of textures and layers to it. That's really nice. It's got a, a, a soft goods uh, belt, nice and thick that wraps around him as well and has a tail that hangs down like that. And then down to the shoes underneath, you can see he's got those light khaki colored pants with bendable knees. All these guys have bendable knees, which is nice, really help them fit in the vehicles and the horses and all kinds of other accessories and, and different things you could get for the line. But yeah, there's Belloc. Well done, not perfect, but you can tell Hasbro Kenner took the extra step to try to make this guy something different and stand out. And now let's take a full look at the figures and the accessories that they come with, starting with Indiana Jones, who of course gets this classic pistol. Looks really good, no paint on it, just solid black, but you can tell in the sculpt exactly what it is, and I think it's pretty well done. And then you get this simple but fun whip, just a piece of string really, and sort of a bell handle for him to hold on to. It's great though, it does hang on his little belt loop right there. You could just loop that on. There you go. Hangs there very well. And then he's got this great action figure where he can kind of quick draw his gun. So if we can get the pistol in his hand, we can see how well that works. It's gonna be a snug fit, but he grips it well. And let's see if he can pull it off. Yeah. Holds on to it and everything. Not too bad. So that's cool. So you get full arm rotation. His head's gonna turn and his legs will kick out and his knees will bend. So pretty good articulation, just a step above classic Kenner Star Wars. And he stands well with all his gear. So that is Indiana Jones. And here again is Carl the mechanic. And all he needs to spring into action is a wrench and an excuse to take off his shirt. And here is the wrench, nicely sculpted in gray plastic. Simple, again, but fun little accessory to have. And just like Indy, he's got the similar gimmick where he will swing his arm out. So if we can get the wrench in his hand, 
you can use that action feature to do that. So you can just sort of knock you out with a wrench. Not a big deal, but it's fun. Also chops, there you go. So you can bash him over the head. And yep, there he is. Carl, ready to rock and roll. Here again, his tote, who doesn't come with much, but he gives you um, a handgun there, a little German Luger. Again, a simple sculpt, but a nice accessory to have all the same. And he actually comes with this coat, which is removable. So that's kind of an accessory in and of itself. It's nice, soft, malleable plastic. So you can just slip it right off and you can see how sharply dressed he is. Um, yeah, nice shiny black suit with um, the red accents and the white pin on his lapel. So there you go. He doesn't have any action features or does his arm swing? No, but oh, look, he's got the, the burn marks in his hand from where he grabbed the uh, headpiece, the staff of raw when it was really hot from the fire. So you can kind of see that sculpted in there, his handprint. Simple, but a nice little extra add-on to have on there. And there he is, a cool little feature for a menacing bad guy. There's Tote. And finally, Belloc is here and he comes with his staff. Kind of reminds me of Skeletor's Havoc staff, that ram's head, nicely sculpted in there. It's all sort of a gold plastic with little ridges and grooves in there to kind of make it decorative and more than just a basic stick. So that's a nice touch. You can see the ram double-sided on the staff. So that's cool. And again, like we said earlier, comes with cloth goods, belt, and this cool little hanging chest plate that's all bejeweled and golden. So really nice. Bell Octa did a good job. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of the head sculpt, but as a total figure, he comes with a lot of fun stuff and he looks well done. So really enjoying this retro line. Hasbro has done a good job bringing them back and recapturing their magic. And that's a review of the Adventures of Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark retro figures. These action figures are indeed beautiful, quite a sight to behold. Thanks for joining us on the adventure. Please like, subscribe, follow us on social media. On Twitter, we are at Steve-O Says Stuff. And on Instagram, we're collecting Star Wars YouTube. You can even follow our other YouTube channel for inspirational videos. And that's called Devo with Steve-O. But until next time, remember, be kind, stay strong, because you are the hero of your own story. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. And be sure to check out this other video right here where we do a full review on this incredible custom Raiders of the Lost Ark Ark of the Covenant, made by our good friend Josh. You don't want to miss that video. And while you're at it, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these retro indie figures. Do you want to see Hasbro make more? How about the Cairo Swordsman, Map Room Indie, Sala, even the Well of Souls playset? That would be awesome. I hope they continue this line. It's super rad and really fun.